Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation this morning is going to be once again on security. We are speaking uh, with regard to statements made by the National Security Advisor, Monguno, of course, who has said that uh, Sheikh Gumi promised to help President Mohamed Bari and the government to end insecurity through moves that he, of course, ne needed to make at that time and uh, the steps that he was taking in relations with the bandits and the insurgents and the kidnappers. And so we're going to, you know, see how much sense we can make out of that discussion, out of that um, uh, story this morning. We've invited, uh, once again, De Misaka uh, to join us and share his thoughts with us. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be back on set. Yes, good to have <laughs> good to you again. You. Yeah. Um, so one of the, one of the um, reactions that I saw to, to, you know, that new story was, uh, why then do we have a national security advisor if... You know, we need a shake to negotiate and to, you know, basically detail what we're doing with security. Well, uh, you've once said that I, I, I'm still in shock when I saw, still in shock. When I read that, I was like, wow, what's Munguno doing? And um, Nigerians demanded for the sack or the removal of the, you know, last sets of service chiefs because a lot of Nigerians felt it was the responsibilities of um those service chiefs to secure Nigeria, keep internal security. I can understand the emotions, and I'm not justifying their prolonged stay in office, but I just want to correct um, a notion. The, the person or the persons responsible for the state of insecurity in Nigeria is the president and his NSA. Uh, the National Security Advisor is meant to advise the president on how to maintain internal um, security. There's something they call signal intelligence. And it's based on the signal intelligence gathered under his administrative uh, control. That is that you probably um, advise the president that forms the you know, um, foreign policies, you know, counterterrorism, and what have you. And what have um, Munguno been doing the last six years with those things, signals and signal intelligence? Has he advised the president rightly or wrongly? Uh, what we've seen so far in almost six years of um, Munguno's um, NSA's um, or stay in office as NSA is um, maybe um, going after sponsors of um, peaceful demonstration in Lagos. Like, you, know, you, could, you, you probably wonder how they have the intel to get the people, the so-called sponsors of um, um, NSAS, and uh, why still we speak, we, we've not seen a sponsor of uh, Boko Haram. I will, like I said last week, I would not sit here and dignify the anomaly or the, the wrong um, classification of these guys as bandits, they are terrorists. And um, <laughs> I laugh at the statement too, because you, you won, in the same briefing with um, press men or members of the press, you said you are not going to negotiate with um, bandits. So is Gumi going to go into the forest and just read an edit or probably um, read some psalms to these guys and they drop their guns? So what what kind of talks are you having with them? Are you just saying, "Come, oh you, oh you sinners, come to me, and I'll give you forgiveness"? Mm. Okay. So we know in recent time the speed of insecurity has increased, right? And it seems that every time we hear in the news that bandits have kidnapped a certain number of people, you know, killed lots of people, it seems that these terrorists are just out of the reach of our security agencies. But every now and then we hear Shigumi visiting them, speaking with them, coming back with information. So what does this really say about access to these people? Well, I, it's obvious that it, it's, um, the governments have been either treating these people as very important criminals. Um, if, um, like I said, last week we raised the issue about the partiality or the imbalance when it comes to a push to security issues by the presidency. And I, I'm always quick to cite the high pub instance, I'm always quick to cite um, the Lekki toll gate incidents, uh, incident. Rather. And now you probably look like, why can't you triangulate um, the location of um, these bandits? How can how can Gumi as a as a as a cleric know the exact location to meet with these guys and the the DSS the the NIA the Nigerian police um, the military intelligence combined force maybe the DAI or the director of military intelligence or her intelligence could probably translate and get the exact locations so it makes you 
it makes you come to the conclusion that the government is not really ready to handle this. Mm. And we have this increase or this surge in criminality. I, I want to take Nigerians back to what happened in 2015, where at Ego Square, um, in, in, in a bid to impress Nigerians, um, Mamadou Bouhari, during his inauguration, said, um, ordered the relocation of command and control center to Medugu with immediate effect. And to the best of my knowledge, those order, that order was not um, carried out, executed, or followed until 13 days after. 13 days in military operation is a long time. And I want Nigerians, I said, um, that, that gave Boko Haram enough room to send out most of their agents and get, uh, get across to their sleeper cells. And as we speak, I can tell you that we have Boko Haram in almost 26, if not 30 states of the Federation. Hmm. So that's what we're dealing with. What wow. we have, and if the NSA knows his job, we should probably should tell Nigerians that what we have is not bandits in Northwest or, or in Kaduna, Zanfa, and Niger. What we have is just um, cells of uh, Boko Haram doing their biddings. And it's, it's laughable because in the same state press briefing, you saw a Munguno trying to throw shades at some governors that they will negotiate with bandits and what have you. And the presidency with the NSA is organizing or probably executing a project called Operation Safe Corridor. And what has that you could probably say that's one of their concepts um counterinsurgency or counterterrorism or counterinsurgency strategy or push yourself credit. But how safe has that made the northwest or northeast or Nigeria? Uh, the the um story also says, of course, um uh, quoting uh, Mongolo that uh, Shegumi is within it's within his rights to meet with anybody and to interact with anybody, you know, that um, he chooses to um, and so, is there ways that you think that we, that the Nigerian security uh, setup can take advantage or could have been able to take advantage of um, Sheikh Gumi's access to these people? I, I will. Because I've always, I've always, you know, asked the question. And last time we spoke with the former director of the DSS, um, I asked him, you know, about well, what, what level of success we've had with regards to infiltrating these camps. Uh, because we can't act like, well, we can't continue to pretend we don't know where they are. So, there should be part of the NIA and the DSS responsibility to infiltrate some of these camps, know more about what they, they um, plan to do before they do it and, and things like that. So is Sheikh Gumi maybe, could we have used him as a... You see, I, I have a lot of thoughts running in my head when you said this. Um, let me say, let's, let's say, let me, there was in 2013, I had um, this conversation with somebody that was with the JTF then. And I was asking him some basic questions that why are they not spotters de deployed across the north, you know, the whole of Bono? And he said to me, Diami, if you deploy spotters, we book them as spotters, spotting the spotters. So it's, it's, it's I, I, I don't know why till we speak that they, not these days again. And NSA, we have an NSA in office that since it's the first day in office till we speak, we've not had the intelligence community twatting, aborting, or foiling any attempt by terrorist group, most of the... What, no, so, so, so there might be some of those things that no, happen that we don't get to see. No, the it, there's no way such things will happen that won't be reported. No, we've actually seen quite a few. You know, the release statements and NCHA really, um, you know, says that they have done this, they have done that, they twatted an attack. It, so we actually um, have had reports in, in, that. With my knowledge of counterterrorism, when you foil a terrorist attack or attempt like that, there's, you have to send, increase your um, security alert level or terror alert level and they are always disseminated to the public it's not something that's like it's not a secret court name because they call the, the country or a region has to be aware of what they should look up look out for so it's not like a clandestine operation it's not rocket science but in their words so it's they can't tell me that you don't peer on my face and tell me it's raining i keep saying that the nsa the they, i don't know if they've just gone to sleep and I'll say that with so much, with utmost conviction. They've gone to sleep. And I keep, I, I keep demanding, where's the bankable intel these guys have been giving the military forces out there fighting for Nigeria? And back to Sheikh Gumi's um, issue. Sheikh Gumi made all trances that, um, yes, he tried to justify the criminality in place, said it was um, a certain a military person of certain religion killing some other people. That's insightful. Sheikh Gumi should be behind bars or probably in detention for that. Sheikh Gumi is not meeting with anybody. Sheikh Gumi is meeting, Sheikh Gumi is meeting with criminals. And that's, that, that is, um, whether you like it or not, those are not Nigerians. Those are not innocent citizens. But it is complicity. So what do we know about Sheikh Gumi's motives, really? Because he's been advocating for amnesty for these people. 
but the federal government keeps putting its foot down saying it wouldn't do that. You see, uh, <laughs> you see this, it's, this government is, is a huge joke. Uh, when I say that, I laugh. You, you, you're saying you're against amnesty. You came up with repentant Boko Haram so, um, in, in, in Northeast. You have your party members pushing for foreign education for these guys. You have a uh, Nasser file now that is sounding so much like an apostle of let's crush them. Came on here to say, and in his words, that um, you are probably go to, you can't pick somebody from, you can't know exactly who did this from Guinea. And I, ha I went to them to tell them if you have, you were sorry that you were caught up in our internal crisis. It's words that, um, yes, are, if you have lost cattles, we'll pay you. And if you have lost life, we pay compensation. That compensation is, uh, is, um, is in the dictates of the two holy books, you know. And he said, if anybody has any better way to deal with this issue, they should tell him. And the same government now that have done this over the years is not telling us that they are not negotiating with terrorists. They've been doing that from day one. You see, you see, let's face it. We have a serious problem. Unless we get patriotic about it, we will not end this war. Mm -hmm. And for us to end this war, the NSA, either, because the NSA had to go with the, with the former side, I don't know why it's still being retained, because it has done nothing. So, so um, um, the, the president, um, in his reaction to the idea of amnesty and the idea of uh, negotiating with bandits. I remember about a week ago, two weeks ago, said there was not going to be anything like that and that uh, we're going to continue with, you know, continue fighting and defeating, you know, the insurgents. Um, I, I, do you think that, you know, we are at a place where we are stuck with having to deal with it the way it is because, you know, we don't have the facilities to actually fight them um, in, you know, through our military? We don't have the facilities to fight them, you know, through our intelligence gathering. And so we somehow, some way need the likes of Sheikh Gumi to help at least reduce. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think we need the likes of Sheikh Gumi. I, I, I said something last week while I was there, and it's nice that we, we, we're probably discussing it again. I don't know why we're deluding ourselves. At this point in time, I think we need to get mercenaries to come in, in, into, this, into this country to help us, mm. whether we like it or not. I don't forget about the bragging, forget about what anybody said. It's, it's on the internet, it's on Google, Boeing, Kiamo's word that during the election, you can fact check it. When the, when the six weeks extension asked by um, President Gulag Jonathan to push the elections forward, go, I tell Nigerians to go on Google, probably we were, we were fed with a lot of misinformation. After that six weeks, there was no region in this country under the control of Boko Haram. They were pushed back. So what happened after that, that these guys came and are having territories and are having cells, holding, having strong gold in forests across the country? So we need to ask what happened. And, I, and for us to get back to where we were before May 29, 2016, you probably would say you don't want to get mercenaries from South Africa because maybe you're in the same continent, they have access to your geography and what have you. You probably would not want to go to America if you think those guys will know over. Maybe they have humanitarian crisis, human rights abuses. We can go to Austria. You can go to Israel. And you don't want to go that far and want a cheap alternative. You can even go to Syria alone. But we need mercenaries to help us because but with then yeah, there's not, it's not a case of a Yoruba man killing a, a, a Hausa man or a Fulani man. It's not a Muslim killing a Christian. They are professional. Yet they, are paying, they are doing the job they paid for. They push these guys out, push them as far as they can push them. And with, with the collaboration with um, Vigilante, locals that are from a Vigilante group that will show them the terrains and what have you. In six weeks, ten weeks. I can tell you, it's not rocket science. Anybody that knows his, his job as an intelligence analyst or probably as, as a military strategist will tell you, yes, we will do this. Now, before, before to, draw the, to, to close this, um, this, this um, argument, any right-thinking NSA, I keep saying this, will tell you that we cannot win this war. When on each military, on each, um, military operations, the army operations, they need to rely on Air Force to give them closer support. For you, before a, a fighter jet can be deployed, uh, or a stand to be corrected, the, 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 either the base commander needs a clearance from the, the cast, signal goes back and forth. It might take two, three minutes. 
but that's a huge time in military operations. Why are we not equipping the Hamid to have its own hair wing? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, an, it's in 21st century, it's, it's unheard of that Hamid wants to carry out an operation and it's tending to rely on Air Force for close air support. That is why we are here we are. The Metele attack shouldn't have happened because the, the soldiers were going back to retrieve their colleagues, coming back on a route, the suddenly uh, retreat. And they went into this, um, they walked into ambush without no air support. Imagine Nigerian Hair Wing, Nigerian Army has like a strong air core, fully equipped with attack helicopters, many of it. Those guys will still be alive as we speak. Okay, so how, members of the House of Reps are pushing for this as well. They're saying, you know, let the federal government hire mercenaries, let them push back Boko Haram terrorists, like you've said. But the president has reacted to this. He said, is this graceful? I really don't know where, what's the way forward now because he's against this and uh, still even the area of uh, amnesty, uh, the national security advisor is saying that, uh, you know, negotiating with terrorists is a sign of weakness and incapac in in incapacity. So what then is the way forward if they would not consider hiring mercenaries and if they would not come to the negotiating with terrorists anyway? Oh, then the first, the first thing I probably would think of as a layman is probably change your NSA. Get a new NSA to come with new ideas. And maybe if a new NSA comes up, it would tell it probably would tell us that there was no need for us to rush buying it to Kano, where we could get a lot of attack helicopters. Even if it may be buying more of MiGs and more of um, um MI-35 and MI-37, which we popularly call Hind. If a good NSA will tell you that, that, would, that is one. A good NSA will probably get um is um intelligence community hop and working. By now, they probably should be preempting attacks. They should probably should have, they be having psychoanalysis of these guys. They should be, um, and things like that will happen. I, I, I don't know why we still, why the president is, is, uh, is not facing the reality on ground. You cannot, we cannot win this war. You, do you think the president knows the reality on ground? Well, I think, he, well, if it was in Kassida and some guys were kidnapped in Kankara, and that is not enough to, to make him face the reality on the ground, that means he's perpetually unaware of what's happening in this country. Yeah, because, it, you know, we, we, we've, we've been dealing with this for more than, you know, 10 years now. And you see, so uh, we, we, so the arrogance that it's disgraceful. Well, the, 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 what brought about the investigation into Bush and presidency during the Iraq war? because the mercenaries were used. So if America could employ it at some point, I don't think why Nigerians, Nigeria as a country should not embrace it. And are we not tired of seeing our, our, our boys coming back in body bags? Are we not seeing our women and children being violated at will? Are we not, seeing, are we not, are we not angry that some guys, you call them ragtag gami, I don't call them ragtag gami, because you see those things, those guys brandish openly and brazenly, you know that those guys are equipped. I, and, and you probably want to tell us, you can, if Muhammadu Buhari as a president think he doesn't need mercenary, let him drop all his security details in Asurok. And I dare him to leave Abuja, go through Jerry to us Kaduna at 6 p.m. And tell me if he'll come back alive. Um, now, uh, some other thing, you know, that I believe the NSA uh, should also be aware of or should have worked towards uh, doing is, um, and it, I, I don't know if it's, it, it should be part of the military tactics, and that is to cut off. Uh, supplies to these these guys you just mentioned some of the weapons that they have um how well do you think we are doing with that because their weapons are not manufactured here in nigeria and so there's definitely free flow of weapons into the country free supply of weapons into the country to these guys funding also food stuff when you kidnap 300 people you must feed them uh for one week or two weeks it depends on how long you keep them so how how well are we doing with regards cutting off their supplies and so, of course, frustrating them out of business. Well, obviously, we've not done that. We've, there's no attempt at that in the last six years because if there had been an attempt, you, you probably would have seen these guys weakened and probably like a kick of a dying horse. Without, we've been in the face of a kick of a dying horse, but we are not. These guys are getting stronger and emboldened day by day. That means their supply is ongoing. Um, whether we like it or not, ransom that has been paid is not for them to go to the street to buy sausages or, or beverages. It's meant, it's meant to buy arms and they send it as business. You see, we should look at, I, we've come up with, some of us have come up with independent intelligence analysis. 
and earning like I'll keep eating at the NSA because if I that sat down here and uh, that, that sitting down here and the closest I've gone to being in the intelligence community is probably um, an admission with some catatorism institutes will tell you that any right-thinking person just lays the map of the old Borno Empire, economy empire, and present-day Nigeria, and present-day Africa, will show you the theater of where this war is going. And you'll be shocked. It's accurate. And that will reveal to you their ideology, probably their sponsors, and where they're coming from and where they're going to. What does it reveal to us? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's quite frightening trust me it's quite frightening okay. there's there's a there's a push for resources resource control there's a push for a a, a, a brand of um of religion or probably a, a a sect of a religion it's 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 out there in the open for any person for any for any person or anybody smart enough to say it so why the NSA has not seen it in the last six years is still something I found I find laughable and infuriating as, as well. Okay. All right. Really, we need to talk more about this some other time. Mr. Deyemi Saka, thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast this morning. You're welcome. All right. Like I said, I'm always the phone call away. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> so, so, lawmakers in Nigeria are pushing for a bill to increase the participation of women in politics. We're discussing that after the break.